Lake Champlain, located in the northeastern part of the United States. Bordered by New York State on the west, Vermont on the east, and the province of Quebec on the north, it is the sixth largest freshwater lake in the country, 125 miles long and 15 miles at its widest point. Lake Champlain's crystal clear surface covers 500 square miles and can drop to depths of over 400 feet in some spots. Portions of the shoreline are occupied by seasonal homes, but the main residents are concentrated in several towns and cities, like Plattsburgh on the New York side and Burlington across the lake in Vermont. Lake Champlain is a go-to destination for relaxation and vacations. But there is one drawback. Some believe the lake harbors a monster. The monster of Lake Champlain has been called one of the continent's great unsolved mysteries of science. A giant prehistoric beast lurking in the depths of the lake. Hundreds of eyewitnesses over four centuries claim to have seen it. Don't know for sure what it is, uh, but something came up along the side of the boat. I don't know what I saw, but it was eerie and it was unsettling. Something caught the corner of my eye, but it definitely uh, something was there. We turned around, we were looking at it, and it was a black neck and head. This is totally, I, I, this is probably the closest rendition of anything I've ever seen that has been put together that fills the bill of what I saw. Their testimonials all describe a creature weighing several tons and measuring over 30 feet. There are three large humps protruding from this calm lake surface, motionless. And they just very slowly sunk beneath the surface of the lake. What I saw was sort of greenish brown, brownish green and um, it didn't have any features other than this sort of roundish, post-looking thing. What we saw was a black neck and head of something. These are the size of the, of the fins that came out of the water. This size, that size, four, jobbies that were purple and this was all this pink color. Journalists, explorers, scientists, residents and tourists, more than 300 in all, are convinced they've seen a monster in the lake. The first person to claim they'd seen it was none other than explorer Samuel de Champlain. Lake Champlain features dozens of bays and over 70 islands. According to witnesses, the lake monster has some favorite spots in this immense body of water. Bulwaga Bay, at the southern end of the lake, is where sightings occur most frequently. This small bay is only about 30 feet deep and considered an angler's paradise. With its school of brown and rainbow trout, carp and catfish, Bulwaga Bay is a hotspot for everyone hoping to lure a trophy fish. Although people claim to have spotted something monstrous lurking beneath the surface of the bay, the big one always seems to get away. A 
After first revealing itself to Samuel de Champlain in 1609, the mysterious creature made several later appearances in Bulwaga Bay, including one in 1887 to a group of railway workers. After that, for whatever reason, the lake monster seems to have shied away and remained hidden for over 100 years. In the 20th century, the monster finally rose to fame. In 1930, with the upgrading of Highway 22 that runs alongside the bay, an increase in travelers coming into the area led to an increase in reported sightings. That's when the creature earned its official name, Champ, and it soon became a star attraction from Port Henry to Burlington. In the 1990s, there was a flurry of Champ sightings. Uh, there several books on Champ came out, a lot of newspaper stories, some of which I was writing, and people came forward all the time with Champ sighting. Uh, this board was put in back in the 1980s. Uh, it was originally designed to be sort of an evolving board that would catalog everyone who's ever seen Champ. It was in early December. We were coming back uh, from the Lake George area along the lake shore um, below Port Henry to South Port Henry on a Sunday afternoon. And so I was looking out the window and all of a sudden I see this post-like thing. So I turn to Bob and I say, what's that post-like thing out there? And when I look back, it was gone. There was no post, but there were concentric circles of water, you know, like big round <laughs> ripples going out. And posts just don't disappear like that. <laughs> we couldn't see anything. The lake was flat, nothing was there, but it wasn't my imagination. I believe in Champ. Because Route 22 runs straight through Port Henry, the village is considered to be Champ's official residence. At first glance, Port Henry has all the traditional charm of small town America. A courthouse, a Liberty Bell, fine dining in heritage buildings, two well-attended churches. But the town also worships two local VIPs, Johnny Padres, a Major League Baseball legend, and Champ. Why should you come to Port Henry? Well, I mean, all you need to do is look at the area. It looks like a European village on a hillside. It's uh, just absolutely spectacular. And of course, we have our world famous um, resident, uh, Champ, who, you know, uh, to this day, even myself, you know, you can't look out on the Lake Champlain without looking for something out there that may be different. The city is so attached to its monster that authorities have declared the lake a protected sanctuary for Champ. A formal public decree forbids anyone to harm, abuse, harass, or otherwise attempt to destroy it. It can be approached, observed, and even caressed, but under no circumstances can anyone hurt it. Port Henry has about 1,200 full-time residents. During the summer season, that number grows tenfold. Its two marinas are huge draws for boaters, anglers, and because of Champ, lovers of strange phenomena. But if anyone were to declare a national sport in the village of Port Henry, the search for the lake monster would be the unanimous choice, hands down. Residents with waterfront properties have a front row seat for observing their lake 
We bought our summer house from an old merchant marine who had traveled uh, the world on freighters. And one of my first days here, I'll never forget this, we were out fishing in a, in a very small boat off uh, Port Henry here. And he looked at me and he said, Ron, there are some very strange things in this lake. That sentence hung in my mind and, and really uh, mesmerized me and stayed with me from the ages of 13 to uh, my late 20s when that sentence came back into play. And I'll tell you what happened to that. In 1981, there were a flurry of champ sightings in the Port Henry area. And I was working as a newspaper reporter for the Albany and New York Times Union, which is the major daily paper in Albany, New York, the capital city. And my editors uh, were interested in seeing all these news reports about Champ being sighted just two hours north of Albany, this major lake, Lake Champlain. And uh, I wrote a six-part series chronicling the flurry of activity uh, in the Port Henry area. It was a good story. My paper played it big. Um, so at the time when I was writing the piece and when the pieces were published, I didn't care whether there was a monster in the lake or not. But two years later, almost to the day, my perspective changed dramatically. July 4th weekend, 1983. I am fishing with my girlfriend. Lake Champlain is like glass. And my girlfriend is in the front of the boat. She says, Ron, what's that? I don't pay a whole lot of attention. We're being quiet, we're fishing, trying to catch fish. She says again, Ron, what's that? And she points and I look to where she's pointing. We watched for probably 10 seconds, three large humps that looked like large tires sticking maybe a foot, foot and a half out of the water, motionless. After seeing these three large humps out of the water, uh, looking back, I have to conclude, uh, although I haven't seen anything since and I've been on the lake most every day in the last uh, five or six years in the summer, you have to come to the conclusion that there's something unexplained in the lake, and it could very well be, in my mind, uh, a plesiosaur it could be something that uh, escapes all of our imagination and may be there yet to be discovered. People who live along the shore of Lake Champlain aren't the only ones interested in Champ. Scientists are also getting caught up in the mystery. I think he looks like a big fish, kind of like a dinosaur from prehistoric times. We are now on the other side of Lake Champlain, in the town of Burlington, Vermont. If Port Henry offers the best places to spot Champ, then Burlington qualifies as the nerve center for local marine research. The scientific body known as the Leahy Center for Lake Champlain organized a gathering to help unravel the mystery of its local monster. My name is Linda Bowden. I am the science education specialist, and we have an exciting program today. It's called CHAMP, the Unsolved Mystery. Dozens of theories have been put forward about the monster. Then, in 1977, a photo appears that grabs the attention of the scientific community. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence that we have is the photograph that Sandra Mancy took in 1977. So the photograph looks a lot like what you were saying, a plesiosaur. When she first took that photograph, she wasn't certain what she saw, but it was something that was very dangerous in her mind. She needed to get the kids out of the lake. They were swimming there when this creature came up behind. That is the only photograph, the only clear photograph of Champ that's out there right now. The Mansi photograph displays the unmistakable profile of a monster. Champ appears to be a species of aquatic dinosaur known as a plesiosaurus.
She took the photo to the New York Times, and the New York Times took it to an analyst who determined that it wasn't a fraud, it wasn't a fake, and the New York Times ran the photo. Uh, it's since been reproduced in numerous magazines, uh, newspapers, it's been in specials about Champ. Uh, the, the Mansi photo is regarded as the most definitive proof that Champ exists. Some in the scientific community needed proof the image wasn't an optical illusion before they would accept Champ as the real thing. In-depth analysis determined the photo was not a fraud and concluded the creature in the photo actually was Champ. I have seen the Mansi photograph and I've read some of the uh, various analysis of that photograph and it's a, um, a little bit of a mystery still, uh, which is part of what makes it all exciting. It shows what looks to be uh, a, a creature's head. It just looks like one of those toy dinosaurs from when I was a small child. Uh, and so if uh, you imagine the head of a brontosaurus or something like that, gosh, this would look a lot like that. When I first saw the Sandra Mansi photograph, I thought she'd taken a photo of a plesiosaur. I thought that this was absolute proof that Champ exists. Uh, the Mansi photograph was reported to be taken in the area of Missisquoi Bay, in the northern part of the lake. However, uh, in the area that uh, Sandra Mansi reported taking the photograph, the water of the lake is uh, about 14, 15 feet deep. It's not very deep. So a large creature would have a very hard time, quite a challenge hiding in that shallow depth of water. Even though Lake Champlain reaches depths of up to 410 feet, skeptical scientists believe it's highly unlikely such a massive animal could thrive here, let alone reproduce in such a restricted habitat. In order to maintain a population over a long time, there probably would need to be 40 or 50 champ-like creatures here to breed uh, and to withstand the you know, rigors of time. Uh, a very small population of uh, one couple or one pair uh, would really not be sufficient. Another argument that challenges Champ's existence concerns the chronological order in which dinosaur species became extinct. The plesiosaur hypothesis is an interesting idea. Uh, it has a lot of appeal to, to some people, and they can imagine what it might look like. Uh, however, uh, the environment here has not been very good uh, for a persistent population of plesiosaurs. Uh, for one thing, uh, the rest of the world uh, saw the extinction of the plesiosaurs about 65 million years ago. So when we talk about the history of Lake Champlain, it's 10,000 years. So we have to remember that's, that the plesiosaurs went extinct 65,000 thousand years ago. Lake Champlain was formed after the disappearance of Ice Age glaciers and the vast sea around it. This dramatic transformation of the geography in the region had a major impact. Salt water gave way to fresh water. Desalination made it highly unlikely that any sea creature could survive in such an environment. Science hasn't explained all of life's mysteries. Champ may be one of them. Let's take a look at some of the crypto or cryptids, as they're called, animals that have been out there. One of the first ones was Kraken. As you may know, the giant sea serpent, right? Now the giant squid, as they're called, have eyes the size of dinner plates. They have a very sharp beak. And it wasn't until 2006 that Japanese scientists actually got on film this giant squid. So what was a cryptid became, yes, in fact, this animal is real. And it was in water over 2,900 feet. So what do you think now about Champ? Could he be a cryptid? 
Could he be something out in the water we're not so sure? So I think we're constantly finding things that are in our seas, in our lakes, in our oceans that we didn't know were there before. And I think people are, are relating to that information saying, oh, well, if folks are discovering new things, then why cannot they discover a lake monster too? Seeing Champ, I, I just think that there are things in my worldview that I believe we don't know everything. There's room for things um, that we don't know. And so I find myself gazing out at the lake at times if I'm reading or walking. I know people that say they don't believe in Champ and they you can catch them looking, crossing the ferry. At one time, geologically, when the sea was connected to the lake, why wouldn't it be possible for sea creatures that we haven't, we don't know about to have come in to Lake Champlain and then adapted their existence in Lake Champlain? We don't know. And, and it's interesting not to know. Somebody said it was a duck later on. You know, like, ah, you saw a duck, don't worry about it. It looked like a post, except it certainly wasn't. My buddy was saying, hey, um, it's ducks, something swimming. Like, All right, ducks. Yeah, no, um, ducks don't oh, swim right. at night, and uh, they quack. Objects floating or moving across a lake surface can sometimes fool the eye. Because our eyes, brains, and emotional states aren't always on the same wavelength, we can't be sure that what we're seeing is actually there. Spotted from a distance, a duck or a tree trunk can have multiple interpretations. In a split second, we might think we see something that, frankly, doesn't exist. So turn around, what do you see? A rabbit. A rabbit. Okay, turn back around. I'm going to change the photo. All right, now turn. What do you see? Tell me. A duck? A rabbit? Okay. A ah, okay. So by turning the rabbit, our perceptions changed. It's still a rabbit. You're a little confused as to what it could possibly be. It's fun to watch how folks sit there and change their mind during the presentation and are beginning to believe that people may be saying something out on the lake. Not sure exactly what it could be, but they do believe that there is something happening out on the lake. Uh, I was uh, working on the ferry boat Champlain coming back from... Port Kent, New York, on a hot August afternoon, and uh, we were sitting up on the deck. And I was reading and happened to look up and came upon the sighting of these two fins that came out of the water. The folks that were with me sitting on the benches on the boat all ran up, pointed out, and asked what it is, and I was a crew member, and as a crew member I had to, after the second one came out of the water, I had to explain that it definitely is champ. Everybody ran to the rail, and now everyone's jumping up down, 
kids are picking up popcorn, throwing it in, feeding champ. Everybody's quite excited. And this was my first physical sighting. And I do believe that there is something here that is part of the, the lake's heritage. Three ferry boats service Lake Champlain between New York State and Vermont. Dozens of daily crossings with hundreds of passengers means thousands of pairs of eyes scanning the horizon at any time. I came to work for Lake Champlain Ferries in uh, 1980, in the spring of 1980. And I kayak a lot too out here. I house it around here a lot. So um, plus my career here, I, um, I'm here a lot. And uh, uh, it's a pretty amazing place. Um, not a bad office. I do recall one spring where we had some high water and some wind and I was actually working on deck and uh, the captain I was working with, Cindy, um, we both saw this long chunk of something with a little thing coming up like this and it was clearly a log. I said, you, you, just wait, somebody's going to come and ask us. And sure enough, maybe the following week a woman came aboard with an 8, time, eight by 10 size photo of this chunk of log and she asked us did you see this at all and we said yes it's over there on that on that shoreline <laughs> and it's a big chunk so that's probably for me the closest you know that I can say there was something out there that looked like champ um, or looked like something unusual What they do see is a wonderful, uh, fertile uh, grounds for speculation. Uh, there are many uh, large animals in Lake Champlain, but large means five or six feet long, two meters perhaps. Uh, uh, we have uh, the sturgeon, the lake sturgeon. It's quite an impressive thing. There's a channel catfish that can be very large, uh, and uh, there also could be two or three uh, otters swimming uh, in succession, one behind another, behind another, playing and looking like it's a single animal. Now there are some other possible explanations for what people have seen that look dynamic, they look alive, and that can happen when uh, the wake of a boat, a wave train that uh, is called the bow wake from the prow of a boat that is moving uh, uh, through the lake, that is a chain of our train of waves that will pass right across the lake and be, be seen by people uh, far removed from the boat itself. is split into opposite camps where Champ is concerned. There are the believers and those who believe the lake monster is a far-fetched legend. The fact remains, more than 300 eyewitnesses are convinced about what they saw. Could all 300 individuals be mistaken? For the answer, it might be helpful to trace the monster's movements beginning in Bulwaga Bay. Jim Carroll is one of the few people who claim to have had two close encounters with Champ, experiences that he believes have taught him something about the creature's habits. Well, I've been on the lake for 40 years. Uh, we're out there all the time. Um, we go out a lot. We take a lot of people out. And uh, you're always looking. Every time you're on the water, you're always looking for Champ. At some point, somebody's going to capture something on film, and we're going to have proof. 
Jim's boat has all the equipment necessary to locate Champ, and he's set his compass heading for the specific locations where it's likely to be found. Passing tourists are a regular part of his expeditions. According to Jim, Champ only appears when the lake surface is relatively calm and the winds blowing from light to gentle. Jim bases his measurements on the Beaufort wind force scale. The scale allows him to calculate the strength of the wind by correlating its effects both on water and land. The Beaufort scale grades wind force from 0 to 10. The higher the number, the lower the chances of spotting Champ. Most sightings occur when the wind strength falls between 0 and 3. Today, Jim and his passengers get lucky. Conditions are ideal. So here we are, and uh, this is where we started. And when I was a kid, we were water skiing right here in the bay, just, uh, just off. Oh, that way? Yeah. It's time to get going at a water skier. We check, make sure he's okay. And then I turned around and looked off to the side of the boat. Make sure, you know, you look ahead, make sure you're not gonna run anything over. And right next to the boat, there was something that was alive. wide, uh, this big long hump that was as long as the boat, it was this little 16 foot ski boat, it was a little disconcerting. Whatever it was was alive and just kind of disappeared into the water up front and, uh, and off to the back of the boat. And I, so my buddy was driving, <clears throat> Did he? Uh, it, we grabbed the wheel, spun around. Went to the, the other yeah, yeah, I'm like, get in the boat. It's like, but it's my turn to ski. Get in the boat. You can see where the farmland, the, the right hand yeah. one of those two, that's Arnold Bay. Were you afraid? You thought? Yeah, I mean, didn't know what it was. Um, what, you know, how often do you see a fish that's bigger than the boat you're in? That's you know, kind of like right out of Jaws. Did you no see it again? I did, as an adult. Um, we were actually, it was in this bay. Twice? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my kids were little and uh, we were out to dinner and it was a nice night and uh, we were just putting back because we had babysitters. Uh, it was over here, on, uh, actually in this shore. We were just putting along enjoying the warm weather and the flat calm. And, uh, my wife says, what's that now? And because uh, I'd read up on Champ uh, a bit and gotten over the, that initial fear from way too long ago. Yeah. Instead of turning the wheel and, and pulling away, we spun the wheel and we headed over towards it. And True. whatever it was, was, it was moving away from us. We moved after it um, and we watched it and it disappeared. And all of a sudden, it's on the other side of the boat. And uh, the couple that was with us, uh, fella was saying, um, well, you know, it's not champ. Like, yes, it is. Um, whatever it is, is alive. It was swimming and it moved away from us over here and it came back. Now it's on this side of the boat. Conditions are ideal. The chance for a monster meetup is as good as it gets. But Jim won't get his third encounter with it today. Champ is nowhere in sight. So with all of that in the evenings on a summer night, when you're looking out over the lake and you see something you're not quite sure about, think about the fact that you might be seeing Champ. Anytime you have a conversation about Champ, you'll find people turn around and want to talk to you about this amazing creature. So uh, it's a very popular program that we do here at Echo. first spotted Champ, the monster has never strayed very far from Port Henry. It's why Champ occupies a central place in the region's cultural heritage and tourism. Everyone has a story to tell, a monster to celebrate. Today, the storytelling is happening here in Port Henry's old library at a gathering of Champ's newest fans. 
This book is called Champ and Me by the Maple Tree by Ed Shankman. In the valley of Vermont, near a lake called Champlain, if you cut through the woods on the old country lane, you'll come to a meadow with one maple tree that's as high as a person can see. Do you believe that Champ is out there? Yes. Think he is? Yeah. Have you ever seen him? No. no. Have you known anybody who thought they saw him? Yes. Tell us a babysitter's husband. He thought he saw Champ because they have a nice view of the lake. And the story of Champ goes back not just into the 70s or the 80s, but you know, you talk to um, people that were, um, that grew up with my dad, you know, that fished on Lake Champlain, you know, they've seen something out there that, uh, that was different. Um, they, you know, even during the ice fishing season, they would see these shadows, you know, as they're sitting in their fish shanties and you, you know, you're looking down your hole and you're fishing, you just, all of a sudden you just see this dark shadow, you know, fill the holes up and then bang, you can see down in there again. So I absolutely, I believe that um, definitely something out there. And, and again, you know, while you're visiting Port Henry, you know, I'm certain that, you know, in most areas in the village of Port Henry, you can see Lake Champlain. So you're gonna be looking east and um, you're gonna be looking for our most famous resident, Champ. Port Henry is the hub for several annual Champ celebrations that draw scores of tourists to the area. Since the early 1990s, the first Saturday of August is declared Champ Day with activities for the whole family. Amidst street parades and sidewalk sales, Champ is honored as the local hero of the day. Later in the year on Labor Day, organizers invite Champ to be their guest of honor at the annual celebration. Alongside explorer Samuel de Champlain, Champ gets a chance to stroll down Main Street before submerging back into his watery home. This once feared monster has become one of the main attractions for visitors to the region. Campgrounds, festivals, and commercial promotions all feature Champ in some tasty way or another. Celebrity sea monster now appears more often out of water than it does in the lake itself. Champ's star power has been a windfall for the tourism industry. We started Champ's Trading Post because we found there was not really anyone out there who was doing Champ paraphernalia for sale for souvenirs. So we developed our own line that includes t-shirts and hats and shot glasses and mugs that have Champ on them. They've done really, really well for us. Um, we find that it's really helped our business having the name Champs and drawing people in. People come in, they say, oh, we've looked everywhere for Champ things, we're having a hard time finding them. Um, they're thrilled to be able to find what they're looking for, to take something home for their kids, or just a souvenir of, of being here looking for Champ. After you've been spending all this time looking for Champ, there's a couple interesting historical spots you may be interested in. One of them is at Crown Point, which is just to the south of here. Uh, and there's an old ruins of the old fort there, and you can just wander through. Something a little more structured is Fort Ticonderoga, which is a historic site. They do reenactments of the different battles that, was, that Fort Ticonderoga was involved in. The kind of people that come into our store are people that are know about the Champ legend, are intrigued by it, have their own stories. Some have a lot of questions. They've never heard of him. Um, and it's just fun to hear the different stories and to you know, talk to people about what they think Champ is. And at the end of the day, sit out with a glass of wine on the deck and just enjoy the, the sun uh, on the lake. And maybe you'll, in those last moments, you'll see Champ off in the distance. 
Fort Henry is a magnificent place. It is among the most beautiful places on earth. Lake Champlain is an incredible lake to behold and to enjoy. And I think the residents of Port Henry are incredibly lucky to have such beauty and such majesty in their backyard. If you come to Vermont near a lake called Champlain and you cut through the woods on the old country lane, there's a chance you will see my friend Champ and me playing happy and free by the old maple tree. And that's the end. When it comes to monsters, eyewitnesses, skeptics, researchers, and explorers all seem to agree. Champ is a full citizen of the communities around Lake Champlain. Now, Champ is part of who we are, Champy in New York, and also up in Quebec, very revered as uh, an iconic uh, sort of symbol for our area. There are potato chips also that are called Champ. There's different car washes champ and of course there are many different kinds of monuments the lake monster for um, the baseball team here is champ lake champlain is a lake that is powerful dynamic full of surprises there's something mysterious and wild about lake champlain Every single time I'm near the lake, whether I'm fishing, whether I'm sailing, um, my fishing tackle box, I carry a camera with me. I may be the next person who claims to have the definitive picture of a Lake Champlain monster. But you're always looking for that, um, for Champ. And uh, chances are that um, when you're here visiting, you're gonna spot him. I'm one of the people who actually saw Champ. I'm not afraid of it. <laughs> if you truly believe or you want to, just chant, just chip, and just chip, you know, just, you know, you never know. I'm serious. I'm, I'm not ready to close the book on Champ ever. I do believe everything I've seen, everything I've heard, and especially with this personal sighting of something physical that I could actually say, yes, that's why you know I'm here sharing this to let you know that it works, champ's good, and more we need more champs. <laughs> Certainly. So many people have such a great affection to the idea of a Champlain creature. And so I think the best habitat for champ uh, where Champ really lives is in the hearts and the minds of many, many people. <laughs>